I believe that if it were left to artists to choose their own labels, most would choose none. This is a quote from artist Ben Sean, who was famous for his works of social realism during the 1920s and 30s. The story of how one of his most notable works came to be starts with Nicola Sacco and Bartolomeo Vanzetti. Sacco and Vanzetti were Italian migrant anarchists who were controversially convicted of murdering a guard and paymaster during the April 15, 1920 armed robbery of the Slater and Morrill Shoe Company. Seven years later, they would be electrocuted at the Charlestown State Prison. Many artists formed around the trial of Nicola Sacco and Bartolomeo Vanzetti as a political crux, one that they felt violated the Constitution and was anti-immigrant in nature. Anti-Italianism and anti-immigrant bias were suspected of having heavily influenced the verdict, and many people thought that the two did not receive a fair trial. The backlash produced a cause celebre, and the world was involved in public debate. During this time, Ben Shant's 23 gauche paintings of the trials of Sacco and Vanzetti communicated his concerns over the socio-political nature of oppression and injustice. The passion of Sacco and Vanzetti was exhibited in 1932 and received acclaim from both the public and the critics. Shant's use of art to inspire socio-political change was a major theme during his life's work. Ben Sean believed that art is not only useful for its aesthetic value, but also its inherent power to inspire and motivate political change. It's not surprising that Sean was sensitive to social oppression due to his upbringing in Lithuania. Ben was born in 1898 to an Orthodox Jewish family who was subject to an oppressive Russian Tsarist regime. When Sean was only four, his father was apprehended and exiled to Siberia for being politically active. Sean and his family would later escape to America in 1906. The class divides and financial inequality of poor America further expanded Sean's views. He would be forced to work as a lithographer at age 15, and this is where his love of art took root. He would later go to school for art in New York. Ben Sean's paintings of the case of Sacco and Vanzetti gave words to the outrage of the public and was a foundational part of the social realism movement. This case garnered intense interest in the individual for Sean, and would later inform his art in a profound way. In this way, Ben found good work documenting the struggle of the individual in an uncertain and impermanent environment during the Great Depression era. Ben would be hired by the Farm Securities Administration to document the struggle of the American farmer during the destruction of their farmland. His work would garner public support for President Roosevelt's New Deal programs. Ben Sean's art could be seen in various political instances for decades. He would go on to make anti-Nazi art for the U.S. government during World War II. He would also later go on to protest the research and production of hydrogen bombs. He made art concerning labor strikes, unemployment, nuclear weapons testing, civil rights, and showed an artistic integrity that would remain strong even after his death. After viewing and compiling Ben Sean's work, I have come to a better understanding of the role of art in society, how art influences and mimics life, and some of the interesting history that built the ways we communicate today. I also noted some interesting similarities between the start of the Great Depression and today's current times. With similar economic downturns, a pandemic, a high unemployment rate, and an uncertain future, we Americans are facing hardships that are remarkably similar to the conditions at the start of the Great Depression. During these uncertain times, it's reassuring to look back in history and seeing heroes pull through and demonstrate resilience. Ben Sean's career was marked by political integrity, concern for the individual, and a deep understanding of how society yearns for justice and equality.